Welcome to my video over masking. Before I start I want to give the following disclaimers. First I'm speaking from my own experience and information I found on the internet. I'm not a doctor nor a psychologist and my views may change over time. Second, though this video will contain accusations, I blame nobody for anything. I was unlucky to be born in a time when autism was not a thing yet and my parents have done everything in their power to help me overcome my difficulties as they became visible. Third, I did not make this video to make people feel pity for me or other artists. I made this video because the term masking hardly covers the impact and suffering that lays underneath it. And I know other artists might not be able to put their feelings into words as I can. And I hope this video can help them explain. When you put the search term masking in autism in Google, you will get the following definition. Masking or camouflaging is artificially performed social behavior that is deemed to be more neurotypical or hiding behavior that might be viewed as socially unacceptable. The motivations for masking symptoms of autism include fitting in and increasing connections with others. I have used and used this term in uh, this context when explaining the need to act different than my instincts tell me to, mostly because it is a way neurotypical people can grasp the concept of what we do and can be a helpful way in explaining the cold mechanics behind it. What this definition lacks as mentioned is the reason and underlying drama of the masking itself and gives the assumption that it is something we turn on and off at will. It does often mean we have developed different standard ways of how we mask in different situations. However, it is far from choosing a persona to perform. I'd like to take a closer look at what is given as motivation. The masking of symptoms, wanting to fit in and increasing social contacts. Masking is not something we want to do, but is something we are required to do in order to function in a neurotypical world. Masking starts when we notice or are told something is not right or we do something wrong, often starting at an early age. A thing I can recall for myself and I am willing to share is that I have a tendency to tighten and release my muscles when I'm uh, sitting still or laying against someone or laying in, in general. Though it does not show much, it doesn't feel nice when you lay against someone. And when you hear enough uh, from relatives that I should lay still when I lay against them, it'll get to me. And it either turns into a conscious exercise of body control and not making muscle spasms, or just avoiding laying next to or against someone at all. Others will have had other symptoms they were initially told to hide because it was socially not acceptable to do, such as flapping hands, rocking movements, etc. etc. A thing to keep in mind is that autism is genetic. We cannot help our impulses as much as the color of our skin. And just as oppression of our race leads to tension, oppression of our natural urges leads to anxiety and stress. When I was later required to be social at school, I discovered I was different. I am not aware that I displayed social undesirable behavior when I first went to primary school. However, I have had problems with my motor skills, which made me horrible at any physical activities and being adopted as Asian in a white community made me stand out regardless of my autism. And though I can entertain myself rather well and people sometimes say that autistic people don't want or need company or lack a desire to be social, this is often far from the truth. The fact that we tend to shun social events is because it requires us way more effort than it is often worth and always has the risk of turning into a disaster as well. I soon discovered I had and could do something other kids my age could not. 
I was smarter than most of them and I seemed to be able to see the social hierarchy amongst those around me. Who was the dominant figure in a group of friends and maybe more important why? Was the person strong? Smart? Did they share a hobby? Did someone have a toy? That sort of things. I learned to make use of that knowledge in order to keep bullies off my back or get protection if I angered someone for whatever reason. Going from one group of friends to another when I felt I had outlasted my welcome. Letting someone cheat on a test by making my answers visible for them to gain their friendship. To asking someone to come over and play on my Nintendo in order to get me closer to another group or person. And though I became rather good in it, and have used similar techniques all over my future life as well, uh, these kind of strategic thinking and tactical planning is not something that is suited for a child in primary school. I have always had a vivid imagination and I was and am behind on my emotional development, resulting in a being very childish in certain things. <coughs> this combined with the fact I knew I had a way to control the people around me to an extent, actually made me feel rather powerful, godlike. Sounds silly now, but I did. However, calling yourself a god and letting your fantasy persona out into the real world isn't socially acceptable, and I was urged to stop doing it as soon as well, the adults started to notice. So I did. I reserved my fantasies to sitting hours at end in my room letting my armada of ships bring, or bring order to the galaxy. And I started to look at adults, how they interacted, how they behaved, gravitating more towards my teachers at school, listening in on adult conversations and adjusting my behavior to that. To the point where they said I was in early puberty and old for my age at the end of primary school. I learned that being friends with a teacher and showing uh, interest and gaining some of their trust could keep me safe as well, as letting me get away with things easier than others and able to let others benefit as well in order to get some of sort of social position. All the while suppressing the urge to talk about my fantasy of solving the conflict in the Middle East with my armies of cyber enhanced soldiers. However, I was told to grow up. I was getting too old for He-Man and Lego. I need to go play with friends, be social and go out. It becomes strange if you ask a box of Lego after a certain age or remain, remain fascinated by every toy store you see and you start to suppress it. And I hope that you can see a pattern emerge here from either being told or a self-realization that something is wrong or does not work and then adjusting oneself to fit the expected standard. From being forced to shake hands or kiss at a birthday party with every unknown relative in the room to an devising ways to avoid eye contact or maintain distance but not too awkward or as to anger my parents to biting my tongue when it has to be uh, necessary to make lame asian jokes when eating out at a Ch chinese restaurant with family to suppressing the urge to start a passionate discussion when i hear someone make uh, uneducated hypocritical or unfair remarks regarding whatever Masking is the result of hearing over and over again that you do things wrong, that how you naturally want to behave is not right and is something that we cannot shut off. Going to a store, doing groceries means that I have co considered every social interaction possible, from people recognizing me to saying hello and thank you to the cashier. This makes going to new stores and stepping into an unknown environment even worse as the variables are unknown and as a result I always end up going to the same stores for my groceries, clothes and other things. Artists love their routines they say, but some routines are created out of fear of something, doing something new or encountering something unfamiliar. And those routines are a form of masking as well and feels like a prison at times to me, wanting to look at those nice clothes but too reluctant to step into a new environment or wanting to taste that sandwich in a new store but 
too reluctant to step in and ask for it. Or ask for a different sandwich in a store I already visited multiple times. Masking is hell. It's not only having your brain be consciously alert and aware of practically anything you do and say, but a constant reminder of the times that people told you that your natural, natural way of doing was wrong. It's a constant exercise of self-control, an uphill battle of inventing the wheel over and over again until you have something that works, to the point where you start losing your own identity, oneself. My fantasies of dominating the situation, the world with my armies, changed to escaping this cursed existence. The constant masking takes its toll, increasing anxiety, making me more tired than others, resulting in neglecting household, not checking the bills, and things like that. All adding to the downward spiral. And I'll be honest, it angers me because it's grossly unfair. Not that aggressive behavior or something like that as a result of autism would at all be okay, but harmless yet social unacceptable outings of our autism should not be condemned, should not be suppressed. Autism is something genetic, just as the color of my eyes and my skin. Black Lives Matter is a hot topic nowadays. People cannot change the color of their skin and therefore should not be judged different for it. Yet we cannot change that we are born genetically different as an artist either. Yet we are put in the back of the bus and are told all we do and are is wrong. And knowing I am autistic makes it even harder as you don't demand a black man to become white in color and culture. So why should I forsake myself then as well? On top of the fact that I'm still waiting for the need needed psychiatric support and guidance. However, this leads to a new set of issues as those who knew me from before my diagnosis now notice a change in how I behave and act as well as a realization that certain ways I have done in, uh, were in the range of abusive as well on my part. Masking is a clinical term, hiding a world of hurt mental abuse by others from being told you do things wrong over and over again, and the painful self-awareness of one's own flaws and shortcomings. The fact that we need to mask and cannot be and live as we want leads to depression, a higher percentage of self-harm and suicides amongst autistic people. Before I end this video I want to stress one thing. Though mistakes were made, I do not blame my parents for anything. They did not know and did everything they could to help me overcome the hurdles I encountered. From doing years and years of physical exercise to overcome my lack of motor skills, bringing friends along on vacations to keep me company, and supporting me when I went into prostitution and entered my wildest episodes of my life. And I am grateful that they are now open and willing to learn and adjust in order to improve a relation of nearly 40 years of arguing, screaming, insults and disappointments from their perspective as well. And with that I wish to end this video. If you liked the video please subscribe and hit that like and notification button. Please feel free to share this video with those wanting to know more about autism or if you feel this video can help you in explain your own feelings and experiences with autism. Thank you again, hope to see you soon.